All right, perfect. It looks like everyone's here and um, Tab, are we good to start then? Okay, then just start whenever you guys are ready. Okay. Um, I'm first speaker proposition, and I would like to say that I would prefer not visual um, speaking POIs. Um, I'm going to begin my time now. So we will begin by, clar by clarifying definitions, introducing our burden for team opposition, and then moving on to points of substantiation. Being with definitions, daylight savings time is the practice of advancing clocks during warmer months so that darkness falls at a later clock time. And means to come or bring to a final point. Coordinated universal time, or UTC, is a primary time Primary time standard by which the world regulates clock and time. Existing means selling stocks and entering means buying stocks. We burden the opposition with providing a solvency that would satisfy, satisfy both the needs of the people affected by daylight savings time as well as the economy, economy and propose a plan for consistency. Moving on to our first substantive. The need for consistent time schedules being implemented year round is crucial because it benefit, benefits the working class. One hour time difference has a, a surprisingly large effect on people's sleep patterns and behavior. We see the stress mainly with the working class and how switching between daylight savings time and standard time in the spring and fall affects her sleep and working schedules. For instance, with healthcare, with healthcare workers who are oftentimes working overnight shift, whose sleep schedules have been already adapted to their shifts, the, the switch between daylight savings time and standard time can be den standard time can be detrimental, not only to themselves but to also to the care that they provide. This shows that disrupting sleep patterns of sleep, also known as circadian rhythm, can affect the working population particularly those whose sleep schedules are rely on time. Daily savings time can fragment the circadian rhythm, which can take days if not weeks to reset. We're likely to experience the deep restorative pattern that sharpens mental acuity and increases reaction time. Therefore, our house seeks to limit the negative effects of daily savings and promote consistent sleep routines and therefore consistent habits and behaviors that align with consistent year-round time. It may be argued that, that with daylight savings time ending, not many countries are open to this idea. However, in March 2019, the European Parliament voted to scrap daylight savings time. The motion seemed to have widespread support. It passed by 410 to 192 votes. And 84% of the 4.6 million responses to its survey on the matter were in favor of the move. This supports the end daylight savings already reaching international attention, which proves that this house is what the people want. Moving on to our second substantive. With the way most international economic decisions are made strictly digital, the effect of daylight savings time has on both the people and difference in UTC and DT, DST negatively affects the economy and different industries that rely on time. My family is from Sudan, and communicating with them with the time difference alone is difficult. However, during the spring and fall, whenever the time disparity is even wider, communicating with them is made harder. Later on in my speech, I'll discuss how communication on an international scale is affected by the daylight savings time as it is what today's motion entails. The way that millions of people use technology every single day, not only for leisure, but also for work, and keeping the world afloat through economic industries that use technology has been affected by daylight savings time in a way that can be described as unnecessary and detrimental. One example would be the stock market, which is what we know America, and most importantly, most countries worldwide, shareholder companies afloat. Through vast amounts of wealth and monetary growth that the stock market provides, and as we know, the stock market is strictly digital and requires humans to keep it consistent. But this consistency suffers when daylight savings time, under saving daylight savings time. And we'll provide more background information on this moving forward. And as a reminder, UD UTC is a standard time that text such as phones and computers use and does not follow daylight savings time. So we are in question, uh, all, we are in question already behind when using data savings time. Now we'll be moving on. The whole idea, so mad. 
I'm sorry for the interruption. Sorry, you muted yourself. Can you? Yeah, sorry. Give me one second. Um, again, so sorry for the interruption. It's um, not I'll, a problem at all. Okay. I will be resuming my time. Okay, so for example, we on opposition and proposition are all students who wake up every day for school. Instead of waking up at 7 a.m. like your normal time, imagine being forced to wake up at 6 a.m. instead. That would ruin your mood completely, would it not? Now let's imagine this for working adults and especially those who have to make choices in the stock market. Under these conditions, they would obviously suffer, both the humans and the stock market. The choices that humans make under the tiring effect of debt savings causes them to make poor choices, as seen in the stock market, and only harms everything, like the rate of returns and how stocks fall and rise. For example, seeking alpha. Since 2007, the S&P 500 has dropped on average of 4% after a weekend of spring forward, far higher than the average year point. 0.3% drop over non-time change weekends. This captures movement on time on clocks, so, so any effect on the clock shift is included, as well as the magnitude of daylight savings effect. Roughly 200 to 500% of the regular weekend effect is both statistically and economically significant in several international financial markets, the authors wrote. In the United States alone, the daylight savings effect implies a total loss of $31 billion on the NYE, AMEX, and NSA the AQ exchanges in just one day. Moving on, I will take one point. All right, so any. yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll give the point right now. And that Go point ahead. to the panel would be, panel, please note that stock market drops of $31 billion are generally relatively normal and could be the you know result of any economic shift, not specifically DST. They have to explain yeah. to you why exactly DST caused that shift in the market for that contention to be valid. Sorry, could you restate your question? It, it wasn't a question. It was a clarification for the panel under a point. Oh, my apologies. Um, thank you. So proud to propose. All right. Um, my name is Brenton Lewis, and I will be first speaker for opposition. Let me just... Get my timer out here before we begin. Uh, and is everybody ready? All right. In 1918, President Woodrow Wilson, for the first time in American history, implemented the policy of daylight savings time. This wasn't an arbitrary decision that was made. In fact, Benjamin Franklin actually began the policy centuries before in order to maximize productivity, to maximize efficiency, and to maximize people's purpose in their lives. For that exact reason, it is important that we uphold the basic underpinnings and the values that uphold daylight savings time. We are so proud to oppose. A couple of things in this speech. First, we'll be going over some framing to set the precedent and it's some clashes on um, what side opposition views this round as. Second, we'll be going over refutation of the material that we heard in the last speech. And third, we'll go and introduce our first two Substantive, substantive arguments. So let's become, begin with some baseline framing. We think one important clarification to make in this round is the utilization of daylight savings and characterizing that correctly. We think that it isn't very charitable of side proposition to come up here and tell us that daylight savings is all bad without discussing the intent um, of what was actually started in the first place. At that point, we think they are drawing a fair comparative and we think that we should reframe this for you. Uh, we think daylight savings time was created for one very simplistic purpose. That purpose being to maximize the amount of daylight that people could see. Most of our arguments are going to be based on that crux, and we don't think it's enough for them to come up here and not tell you about why it was intended to be the way that it is. The second characterization that we would tell you is it is important at this round is a mischaracterization on proposition side of the house. The comparative is which side best justifies the practicality of daylight savings time, not the minor issues with it. 
If they can't win that clash on the true comparative, they can't win the debate. With that out of the way, let's move into the refutation of their substantive arguments. Our opponent's first point was made that consistent time schedules for the working class were, oh, sorry, were about consistent time schedules for the working class and mental um, acuity. Our, our, we, have two, we have two responses to this. First, our first response is that if everyone maintains daylight saving times, there's really no negative drawback to inconsistent timings in the economy and society. Um, so we're somewhat confused as to why this is true uh, in a second. And then our second response to mental acuity is that they don't recognize why losing one hour of sleep somehow drastically disaffects the working class. We would also tell you that, hey, if you get an extra hour of sleep one day and lose one another, they're really overselling how terrible that is. So we believe that this is impactless. Um, I believe POI. Okay, so you say that everyone uses daylight savings time and how moving away, moving away from that would cause inconsistency, but wouldn't standard time on a universal scale cause more consistency on a global scale? So, uh, see, our, our point was that, um, like, using daylight savings time, like, the, sched the schedule is set so that people are able to adjust to save, like, daylight savings themselves. And so, like, we're maintaining, like, a consistency either way here. So, the point that creating a universal time is, like, we're con confused as to why, like, there's a difference between the two. Um, there's no, like, we like there's no need for this, um, con that sort of consistency. So, all right, moving on. Um, your, our opponent's second um, point made was that economy and communication was about, I'm sorry, about economy and communication since UTC exists and that the stock market needs to be consistent. We have two responses to this as well. Our first response to this would be that this is a really confusing argument in general. The stock market has always been on daylight savings time and we clearly have a functioning stock market. Until they can prove to you why this is so terrible, we're extremely confused here. And then second, we believe, um, uh, our second point of reputation is that um, is about communications that they're only warned to this um, is that one bench member on their side of the house had an extra hour to talk to family. So we would tell you that many people also lose an extra hour since global times go both ways. Um, and we, so we don't, don't buy this anecdotal evidence. They don't really have any offense left, but now let's finally introduce our first three substantive arguments. Our first substantive argument is on crime. Primarily we see increased crime and darkness. Criminals prefer to execute their activities in the comfort of darkness, so much so that crime rates are lower by 30% in the morning to afternoon hours, even when those morning hours occur before sunrise, when it's still dark. Like this is according to washington.edu. In the comfort of anonymity and darkness, um, worse acts occur. Namely, these aren't simply misdemeanors, but embody acts such as murder and other life-threatening deeds. Economist Jennifer Doliak, PhD, and Nicholas Sanders, PhD, found that robberies drop about 7% overall and 27% in the evening hours after the spending time, spring time change. They stated, most street crime occurs in the evening around common commuting hours of 5 to 8 p.m. And more ambient light during typical high crime hours makes it easier for victims and passerby, passerbys to see, to see potential threats and later identify wrongdoers. In 2007, an estimated 59 million was saved because fewer robberies were committed thanks to the sun being up later. Thus, with extended daylight, we will see less opportunity for these pernicious crimes to occur. Impact this out to preservation of human safety and lives, as well as e economic benefits that will flourish under reduced crime, such as robbery. Second, human lives are saved through daylight savings time. Evening rush hour is fatal in all countries. Substances such as alcohol are present in driver's bloodstreams, everyone is rushing home, and more children are out playing in the road. This is a dangerous situation for all. In fact, ncbi.gov states that fatal crash occurrence was related to changes in daylight. These changes occurred abruptly with the fall and spring time changes. An estimated 901 fatal crashes, 727 involving pedestrians, 174 involving vehicle occupants might have occurred if daylight savings time had been retained year round from 1987 through 1991. That's just America. We are saving many more lives worldwide, especially addressing that there are many more cars on the road at this time. Um, yeah, that there are many more roads, sorry, that there are many more cars on the road at this time. The impact of this is clear, human lives. Daylight saving time saves thousands of human lives a year. And in that we are protecting drivers and those inflicted by drivers. Lastly, the economy of not just America, but the world as a whole, whole prospers under DST. Later daylight means more economic activity later in the evening. This includes higher consumption of gas, snacks, and simply general shopping. 
This is especially true with industries focused on outdoor life and activity. In fact, the golf industry reported that um, one month of DST was worth $200 million to $400 million because of the extended evening hours golfers can play. The barbecue industry estimated their profits increased $150 million for one month of DST daylight savings time. This is inherently good for countries overall in that it raises universal GDP. This benefits the country as well. Its citizens, uh, as, as its citizens, um, as it can promote better quality of life. The impact of, to this is clear. Countries economic flourish under DST in that consumers are more active in their light, in the light hour of night. This benefits their people and country altogether. Therefore, it is clear that the opposition provides a stable, healthy society for its people. To end it would be to reverse its positive effects, um, thus killing people, ruining quality of life, and harming the GDP. And for these yeah. reasons, I'm proud to represent the opposition. Uh, I guess, final POI. Um, earlier in the speech, you were in protective time, so I wasn't able to ask this, but you had mentioned the intent of uh, DEST. I was wondering if you could clarify what that intent was. What was the initial intent? Because you did not clarify it. Um, let me go back to that. Well, the goal of the overall, I guess, intent of daylight savings time is to maximize efficiency so that we get more hours of light for like productivity to increase. So, yeah. Okay, I am second speaker, Samantha Schmelzer, and I will be speaking for side proposition. I will begin now. And I prefer, a, like, when you click the little hand, I prefer that for um, POIs, because then I can actually hear it. And I'm going to be reading, so I don't look to see if somebody has their hand up. So I prefer, like, digital POIs. I will now begin. Uh, for our reply speech, I will list our substantive, and then I will clarify um, a point that they brought up, and then I will refute. Thank you. Substantive three. Inconsistent timing year-round has an extreme effect on health and wellness, most notably for school children. Moving the clots forwards is not just an inconvenience to our sleep schedule. It plays a drastic role in our health. When it comes to young children and DST, it can be something that is very hard to adjust to, especially with two different times DST changes within the year. At such a young age, children are still developing, so it's extremely hard to adapt to different schedules so often. That can affect their ability to react and process things throughout the day. Therefore, our house is stressing the need for consistency within the standard year-round, within the standard time for year-round for children. DST doesn't only affect child development, but many others around the globe. According to National Geographic, a 2012 study done by the University of Alabama at Birmingham's Martin Young found that the risk of heart attacks surges by 10% after moving the clocks ahead. This is just not one random study. In 2008, the New England Journal of Medicine published their findings that heart attacks did in fact rise after moving the clocks. The hospital reported a 24% spike in hospital visits. This also brings down the economy as well, because when you have all these people going into the hospital, you need some sort of support for that. What benefit does daylight savings bring that is worth a life? If the people who are supposed to be positively benefiting, benefiting from daylight savings are saying that we should be continuing, that we should not be continuing this practice, why is there such an urge to do so? It is, is keeping this outdated observance worth the extra hospital trips, medical bills, or the lost lives. Team opposition may argue that the usage of DST reduces the, the demand. Uh, this is my refuting, by the way. I would just like to clarify that. Team opposition may argue that continuing the usage of DST reduces the demand for electric, electric energy consumption, but in theory, the end of daylight savings has shown to not help in any way, shape, or form to the aid of less energy consumption. In modern times, with the exponentially growing use of phones, computers, cars, and trains, energy is rapidly increasing. 
So when in when when Indiana decided to introduce DST in 2006, a study found that the measure actually increased energy in the state. Energy consumption has been growing despite DST, which has been observed for over 100 years in the United States alone, due to the rapidly increasing population and the stress that it places on energy resources. However, this debate is not the issue. However, this debate is not about the issue of global resource consumption, but rather if DST should be ended or not. Therefore, since energy consumption is going to continue with or without DST, this eliminates this argument. And before, and I would like to bring up, um, and I'd like to clarify as to why the stock market suffers under DST, uh, UTC, again, is the time that digital phones and computers uh, use. And because the stock market is digital and does not follow DST, um, the stock market, the tech that the stock market is put on follows UTC and the humans using the stock market and the humans themselves that use DST, when there's a different time, humans are behind the stock market by five, by over five hours. And therefore the stock market suffers. And even if, even if the stock market goes up and down all the time, shouldn't we at least try to stop the possibility of the stock market? market going down because it can spiral into a huge economic loss for a lot of people who have stocks and shares within the stock market. Okay, that is all. Thank you. Uh, actually, um, before, where, where are there like any POIs? Yeah, sure. Let me offer you a point. So do you think it is drastic when children take a vacation and go to a different country and their time zones are skewed off because they have jet lag? No, but that is one example. And people don't take vacations like every other day or for like seven months, like in order. For DST, that's how it is. Like it's used for such a long period of time that it's going to affect these children. Taking a vacation once and having jet lag once it's not going to affect them as much as DST does. Okay, that is all. Thank you. Wonderful. Um, so, yeah. Is there anybody not ready at this point? Also take verbal POIs. Um, I won't be able to see you this time around because I'm in a different space, but yeah. And Judge, are you ready? Yeah. yeah. Wonderful. Splendid. All right. All right. We'll begin. Um, excuse me? Yes. Is it all right if I use the bathroom for like two minutes? Yeah, I can hold off if you need. If that's okay with the judge, of course. Yeah, right. go ahead. Um, you don't need to wait for me. If you'd like to, like, go ahead and say your speech, I don't want to, like, like you know, like stop you or anything. I'm just gonna use the bathroom to, for like two minutes. And oh, okay. And you're not you're not giving another speech after this. No, after I'm that. just okay. Okay, there. wonderful. All right, sounds good. Then I'll just get right into it. Side proposition comes up here for 16 minutes and soapboxes on why daylight savings time is terrible for the economy, terrible for global consistency, and terrible for wellness. Yet what they conveniently and fatally ignore is what specifically daylight savings time was created for within the context of this debate and why that turns every argument they've made so far against them. At the point at which they make that malignant mistake is the point at which their arguments lie bed sick. It's the same point at which they've already lost this debate. We're still proud to oppose. Now, this debate up to this point has been somewhat unclear, so let's begin with cleaning up the framework debate. I think there's one key clarification that needs to be made on side proposition shortcomings. Panel, note that proposition thinks that the burden of this debate in some sense is to prove that we have some sort of obligation to economic profit, which is a bad way to view this round because we think that arbitrary profit isn't actually an issue this house cares about. They, all, they need to also debate this discourse on the level of actually mechanizing this expansion, and they seriously need to tell you the stakeholders that they're actually affecting when they get this arbitrary profit, which they failed to do so far. What? And this will be really important. You're out of order. This is protected time. Really important moving forward. It underscores just about half of the material they gave you regarding the stock market and everything else. 
that's going to be really important because it underscores half of their arguments moving forward. And I'm going to be reiterating that as we go down and we examine those arguments. But more specifically, and with that, uh, that out of the way, let's go over where side propositions arguments fall short. So let's examine the faulty material that they just gave us. And as a top shelf response to their entire case, they make two flawed assumptions that doom their entire advocacy. First, they assume that this debate occurs in a vacuum and that real world circumstances don't actually actualize. The problem then with their entire case becomes that it ignores the reality of universal time. Time goes both ways. There's always going to be inconsistency within the time zones of say someone in the United States, someone in China, someone in India. Those are always going to be different time zones and whether certain countries choose to exercise moving to save one hour of sunlight is not going to somehow pan out and fix for the discrepancies that exist with our you know, geographic status. But second, they assume that that one hour is truly some end all time skew that leads to everyone's lives being turned upside down. Let's recharacterize this assumption on how people's lives are actually affected. Note the point that I asked in the last speech when I told you very specifically what happens when a kid goes on vacation and they have to deal with, you know, a few hours of jet lag. What happens when a kid from California goes to see his relatives in New York? Is his life really that drastically affected? And they concede themselves that this is not that big of a deal. They also concede in the speech before that that, hey, you know, people can adjust to these time skews. It just takes them a little while. Yeah. We would tell you there that's that means that they have incredible case tension and they are in, they put themselves in a double bind. You can't have your cake and eat it too. You need to pick one or the other. We would tell you that either one you pick, you concede very inherently that it's not that bad when a kid is one hour off their sleep schedule. It's like, you know, going to bed an hour late. We don't think that it's, you know, fair for them to come up here and to essentially mischaracterize this as some drastic thing for their health. With that in mind, yeah. I move on, I'll take a point. Um, also, okay, so I know I asked the first speaker this, but can you guys clarify, like, put into, like, exact reasoning why, um, the intent, what the intent was for daylight savings? And, um, also, can you clarify how one hour of missing out one hour of sleep over one week on vacation is the same to missing out on an hour of sleep over a period of months? You okay? So I think that's a loaded question of two parts. Let me answer the first one. The first of and Brenton characterizes this very well is that you're far more efficient when you have more daylight as to working in the dark all the time. We've given you three arguments and eight minutes of material regarding that. But the second on why like it's the same with like going on vacation or losing one hour of sleep every night. Let's make this clear: you don't lose an hour of sleep every single night during daylight savings time, you essentially just shift your schedule for one day as all the clocks move forward. And for the rest of the time, you get the same amount of sleep you used to get before. Plus you make up that one hour an extra day. I would think that on net, this is just kind of a bad characterization to make. And also it doesn't, you know, it's not very consistent with what daylight savings time actually is. With that in mind and moving forward, their first substantive argument, still refuting, is on how we need a consistent time schedule for the working class. And their mechanization into this is how people work different schedules and making it more confusing is bad. There's a couple of reasons as to why this doesn't make sense. The first of which is because it doesn't engage with the brevity of the status quo. Panel, understand that no working class person is really, really going to be drastically disaffected like they tell you just because they missed out on one hour of sleep a night, like one hour of sleep on one night and then ended up getting it back at some point. We think that this is generally a bad characters. Again, no, thank you. There's no mechanization they give you as to how people's lives are affected. They don't give you an actual impact. They just tell you working class people lose one night, like one hour of sleep, one specific night. We don't think this is something that you should really be voting on. This response that Brenton actually also does touch on goes untouched. And it's where we're clearly ahead on their own arguments. We don't think that they have any offense on that point. But the second reason as to why you shouldn't buy this argument is simple, specifically on taking them at their absolute highest ground. Let's take them to their absolute highest ground and say that someone does lose like a net hour of sleep. We still think this is an impactless argument. Losing one hour of sleep to, to reap the benefits, the all three benefits of road safety, you know, of you know, better health, all the things that we've told you in case so far. I mean, that's pretty worth it anyway. So we outweigh on that front. At that point, the entire ideological crux of their case is gone. But then their second substantive argument is on the consistency of a global timescale for things like global communication in the stock market. As Brenton tells you in opposition one, we would tell you that global communication goes both ways. If, you know, their first speaker is going to get an extra hour with their family, someone else is going to lose an extra hour. But moral, moreover, we would also tell you very specifically that the stock market already runs on daylight savings time. The stock market will always run on American time, given that, you know, it's located in America and is on East Coast time. We don't really get how this is going to be, you know, drastically disaffected. We would also tell you on the stock market point that in general, if I'm a stockbroker and I know that daylight savings time is, you know, coming up because I have a calendar, 
I'm not going to wake up late that day because that's my job. You know, waking up one hour and shifting my schedule is not, again, going to make a really big impact like they would have you believe. We don't buy this. But third and most importantly, and going back to the framing that I give you at the top of this case, I tell you very specifically that they need to prove why the stock market is actually important. We would tell you that in a country like America, the stock market is a way for the, you know, the wealthy to essentially screw the working class out of everything that they've ever earned by upholding an institutional capitalist society that doesn't actually do anything anything for anyone. If they don't tell you who's being affected by these arbitrary profits, which most, most of the time helping the start, stock market is really just helping the wealthy people of this country, given the skew of ownership, we would tell you like, we don't really, we don't even think that's a good thing in general. At this point, it's too late for them to, you know, talk about arbitrary profit and somehow turn that into an impact later on in this debate. Still don't vote for them. But moreover, we would tell you that this underscores most of their economic arguments. We don't know why, you know, rich people essentially getting more economic leverage against the working class of this country is somehow a good thing. So turn that argument against them even. But then the third argument they give you is about children. And we've already pretty much cleared this up. If a child goes you know, to, on vacation, it's the same thing. We really don't think this is going to really affect children like they want you to believe. But then they try to give you this argument about hard to tax decreasing. This is really mischaracterized because understand yeah. one crucial thing, you're in protected time, no thank you. I would tell you very specifically, hard attacks decrease when, they, when people get one extra hour. It's about the time of sleep you get. It's not about daylight savings time and the intricacies of what is intrinsic to that. We think that this is a bad characterization. We we also think that's offset with the extra hour you get. You can look at the general scientific consensus. That's true. Now, there are two worlds in which you can view this debate. You can vote for the side that really hasn't given you any consistent argumentation and anything on stakeholders, or you could vote for us and vote for the people who actually are going to affect, you know, um, argument on crime, the argument on crime, helping people in, you know, traffic, which affects lives and is the biggest impact of this round, and also the economy. At that point, we're still so proud to oppose. Hi, um, my name is Destiny Conley, pronouns are she, her, and I would prefer that I have verbal PORs. And before I get started, let me put my timer on, on airplane mode. Um, give me one second. Starting now, I will be going over, over our opponent's points and how their burden is not viable. The first speaker established that daylight savings was be had begun in 1918. However, many things have changed since then. They also brought up efficiency, and I will clarify their efficiency or intent and what it really means since they could not clearly do so. The intent was intended to have workers work longer for big corporations and different businesses. They, It was strictly a product of efficiency for these companies. Again, proving the point that money is more of value than human lives. The opposition is putting money such as stock market and economy over physical, physical health and mental health. They did not clarify the intent of DS. Uh, they, they never even clarified the intent of DST, making us fill in the gaps for them. They also brought up the one of their substantive crime. They mentioned how um, crime happens more at night and that um, Vigilante, or not vigilantes, um, juveniles, oh my gosh, I'm using the wrong word. Um, criminals feel more comfortable performing criminal acts at night. However, this is only cutting back an hour at night. So are we, are we just going to say that all crime is cut down because of this? No, it's still going to continue. Also, what about the other part of the world who continue to not use this? Are they are they um, and inherently are they and inherently affecting their crime rates? Are they um, encouraging crime to happen in their countries? Um, they also mentioned 
uh, fatal crashes. But what they fail to mention is that uh, what they fail to mention and argue against is our third substantive, where we saw that uh, the grogginess of people driving at these hours, missing out on an hour of sleep or gaining that hour of sleep actually led to more fatal crashes. And um, that proved that it was proven through our 25% increase in hospital, hospital visits. The second speaker also uh, still did not clarify, even after I asked for the second time, what this intent was. They continue to bring up what intent really is, but they never actually clarify it. They never define what the intent of it was. And that was made, what was what I brought up earlier is that it was used for workers to be used as props to work for longer. They also went into saying how drastically how our substantive one never clearly states what uh, never clearly states how it, it affects people with uh, health issues. However, we clearly stated it how it has like heart attack issues or how there is an increase in uh, cardiovascular issues and the 25 percent increase in hospitals and they also brought up how global communication is not heavily affected. However, those of us who have family members in different parts of the world would like to disagree as it's already hard for us to contact um, our different family members. They said that the stock market also runs on America's time because it was created in America. However, does that mean that us as a majority or however we should cater to the minority of America and not the majority majority of the world and that we should just sit back and cater to America? even though 80% of the world does not continue to use uh, daylight savings. The second speaker this, the second speaker also said that we can never clarify our substantive, which I find it very um, humorous because they never con they could never clarify the consistency or they could never they could never clarify the intent of what DST really was and they they said that we had no consistency but that's literally what our whole argument is is that the consistency of workers not being able to worker or workers not being heavily or workers being heavily affected and he went into saying that workers aren't heavily affected however uh, me personally my mom's a nurse so her working those night shifts she is heavily affected having to work an extra hour is a major deal especially when you have to drive home after working that shift the the uh our opponents have clearly stated that they do not care about the lower working class through their through their substantive, they they continue to diminish how the working class is actually and truly affected by these uh, propos or are affected by the changing time zones or the change in time. And for that reason, we urge you to vote in pro uh, proposition. Thank you. Hello, um, I'm Alexis Bell. I'll be speaking third for the opposition. And as an off-time roadmap, I'll simply be going over my opponent's last um, speech, going over their main points, and then re-implementing our own. Can everyone hear me all right? Great. Uh, my time will begin now. The main clash point of this debate so far has been the intent of daylight savings times. It is pretty direct. The intent was to increase economic benefits as well as benefit the people of society. Essentially, when you have more daylight hours, people can work more. My opponent goes on to say that we are abusing people by having them work longer and that the intent is, intent is actually negative. However, we directly refute this. We are saying that this will lead to economic increase and that there will be more people working and there will therefore be more pro productivity. But also, working does not hurt human lives. It does not abuse their rights. Working is a job that they normally practice, and what we're simply doing, the intent, was so that we could have longer working hours, if the people wish so, um, to increase the economy and also make the people more money. Um, <clears throat> our opponents also attempted to argue that we have lack of consistency if we implement daylight savings time. However, that point is completely invalid in that it's simply a one hour shift and we have already gone over this multiple times that workers aren't really affected. They don't have a link in that one hour of a sleep schedule 
is going to affect them that much. And even so, it's that the amount of daylight is what's switching. You can still sleep for eight hours, even if it's light outside. Therefore, that point is invalid. We have definite, definitely clarified the intent multiple times. It is clear that the intent of daylight savings time is to promote and increase the economy, allow for better quality of life, and that people are able to work more, and that um, people are essentially saving their lives and doing better in the aspect of health, which we will get to later. Uh, moving on, my opponent um, counters our criminal acts by saying, by basically saying that it isn't valid. However, it's obvious that we're not getting rid of all crimes. We're simply saying that, yes, it will decrease if we have one hour more of daylight. Because as um, Brenton stated in the very beginning, when we have more daylight, it's basically, crime will decrease. And even if that's just one hour, we would like to see that 30% decrease in crime because that will save human lives and that will um, inherently help the economy. As stated previously in 2007, the economy was greatly affected positively by daylight savings time and that millions of dollars were saved due to lack of these crimes. And this isn't just one hour, it's one hour each night. Um, so if you think about it, worldwide, um, people that don't use daylight savings time should have increased crimes, as we have stated repetitively with these statistics. Moving on, my opponent goes on to counter our um, human lives being saved through driving um, in that people are groggy and that'll lead to more car accidents. Um, Essentially, this has no impact because we give a direct number of how many lives will be saved. With darkness, the um, chance of car crashes and other deadly acts through vehicles is um, significantly increased. They are arguing for a few lives that would be affected due to grogginess and lack of sleep. However, again, we tell you that you can still sleep when it is light out. Um, but when it's dark out, the danger of crashing into people, of crashing with other cars, is significantly increased. Um, lastly, on the health issues point, again, we want to stress that it's one hour, and it doesn't mean that you can't sleep. Um, and then my opponent goes on to talk about contacting family, which honestly, my partners and I are a little bit confused about. This is a new point, and uh, we do realize that contacting family is important, but we are advocating for the preservation of human lives here, which we do value at a higher um, rate. Not to mention, you can still contact your family at any time, even if it's a 12 hour difference. Um, upon that, it's not just the US that is implementing daylight savings time. It's also many countries in Europe, and that is key to realize. Um, so this point doesn't really relate to the overall topic. POI? Yes. Um, as stated in our first um, substantive, the European Union has already pushed to eliminate daylight savings. So I'm confused why you're arguing that, like what so exactly you're arguing. Implemented it. It's been implemented. They voted to not have daylight savings. They move, they want to move towards standard time. Okay, well, there's many other countries besides the US that do have daylight savings time in this aspect. Um, moving on. We care most about human lives, and they're saying that we aren't really worrying about the lower working class. However, that is the complete opposite of what we are advocating for. The, those that are at a disadvantage are who we care about most, and they are actually the ones that are advocating for the aid of the rich in the status quo. With the stock market, the stock market is something that benefits the rich because they are able to put in more and thus are able to produce more. The stock market in the status quo is an entity that inherently harms the working lower class, um, thus disproving their argument. So going down their case, essentially their first contention is that it harms the working class. However, again, we've stated that one hour isn't that significant of a difference and that you are still able to sleep that there will be a decrease in um, the stock market. However, again, we've told you that this is inherently advocating for the yeah. preservation of the rich. And lastly, they say that um, children, children's health will be assisted, essentially. 
However, we tell you, and they conceded to this as well, that jet lag is a, an inherent example. And it's not one hour each night. It's one hour one night. And then you just keep that shift for the remainder until the next daylight savings time transition. Um, going down our case once more, we tell you that um, essentially criminalization will decrease and er, is decreased because of this. And they haven't interacted much with this, except that um, it won't really occur because it's just one hour. But even that one hour with a decrease of 30% is significant. We tell you that um, there will be less car accidents, yet they counter this with the grogginess. However, we outweigh and that we are saving more human lives. And then we tell you that um, the economy will benefit because there are more people working. They try to counter this again with the stock market example. However, we are not advocating for only the rich. We are advocating for the preservation of those who are in the lower class, those who are, who, who are working each day to put a meal on, meal on the table for their children. Um, we, are, we have shown that inherently crime due, due, during darkness has contributed to billions lost. Um, so when we have more time of lightness, we are helping the economy. And again, we outweigh on dollars as well as human lives. Therefore, vote opposition. Thank you. All right, I assume that this is my speech. Um, I'm just going to assume that everybody's ready. If not, unmute yourself if you need a second. Wonderful. I will begin. I find it somewhat offensive for the proposition to come up here and accuse us of, quote, not caring about lower class, lower working class people. Let's make something clear. Proposition was the team that came here and framed their burden as benefiting economic profit. Proposition was the team that came here and gave us an entire argument, albeit unwarranted, on the stock market. And we're not going to sit here and be grandstanded by a team who continues to move the goalposts on what fiat that they've stood on through the, down their bench. We're still incredibly proud to oppose. Now, let's begin with some final clarity on the framework that they've messed up in this debate. Proposition wa Whip wants you to believe that somehow the intent of daylight savings was to make people work longer. This flawed characterization is emblematic of their understanding of daylight savings time. We continuously tell you it was so people can literally have a more efficient schedule and see more sunlight. We tell you this is the basis of all of our arguments. And by the way, we would tell you that if companies wanted to make people work longer, they would just make them work longer regardless of the sunlight. So that clarification is crucial because it underscores the values that each side has stood on. That point, three clashes in this debate. The first is on traffic safety because it's been the most impactful point of this debate. And what do, they, what do you hear from our side of the house on this? We tell you that for months when you have extra sunlight, you get extra road clarity. If you've ever driven a car before, you know it's a lot easier to drive when there's sunlight out than when you know it's dark and it's, it's at the night. We tell you that thousands of lives are saved every single year. These are human lives because we have daylight savings time that maximizes the efficiency of sunlight. We tell you this is an inherently good thing. We hear no response down their bench, and we're really confused as to why they haven't actually engaged with the most important crux of our case. But then you hear one kind of clip from them about how they also benefit tra traffic safety because people are groggy the one day they lose one hour of sleep. We would tell you that on any comparative, we would prefer road clarity for months given sunlight than, you know, people being, you know, lagged one hour of sleep for a day. We think this is very intuitively flowing to our side of the house. Flow the thousands of lives that are going to be affected. We've already won on that point alone, even if you don't consider anything else in the debate. But the second clash underneath this entire debate has been on the economy, right? And what do we give you under this? We tell you that crime is incredibly hard to do when it's broad daylight, hence the term, it's hard to commit a crime in broad daylight. At that point, we give you clear mechanization and we give you the empirics of getting that extra life, protecting the economy, protecting people in general. This has been very clear down the line. They don't actually engage with it. They just continue to soapbox on how we are bad on you know, our intent, but don't actually engage with how we tell you we practically reduce crime, flow that through, and that wins us the round alone exclusively. That's an independent path to the ballot. But what do you hear from their side of the house? They tell us about the stock market. Again, we tell you that one, they don't haven't cleared up why the stock market is good in the first place but two it's going to run on american time anyway so everyone around the world does like you know they're not going to be on the same time regardless so it's not unique but then they tell you this idea of working class people losing an hour of sleep every night we tell you you lose an hour of sleep once and then you adjust and then you get an extra hour of sleep back later they're very confused as to what 
their side of the house doesn't understand what daylight savings time is. Daylight savings time is when you shift the clocks one hour, not one hour every single night. And, you know, don't let them make that implication. It just doesn't make sense. At that point, the only offense that they really had left there is also inherently self-binding. We don't buy that. We're clearly ahead on the economy. But the final thing that we tell you about is human health. We tell you about how children, we tell you that, you know, children going on vacation is essentially the same drawback that they're talking about. At the point at which we help road clarity and crime, we would say that that clearly outweighs. But we would also tell you that children are not going to die because they lost one hour of sleep. That's you know, just not intuitive whatsoever. At that point, the three clashes of this round have all flowed over very clearly to one side. And those impacts of the lives that are affected are all on our side of the house. But more importantly, let's go on to this lax externality that they kind of want to you know, revive in the last segment of the debate on contacting family. So let me tell you this. If someone has one hour moved so that they are closer to contacting family, someone else around the world loses that same hour. This is completely non-unique offense. This is why you shouldn't use yourself as an example in debates. It's incredibly myopic. We don't think that this is a reason for, to vote for them either. We still think that, you know, side proposition has been incredibly, you know, confusing at this point. At some point, I don't even know what they're arguing, but we're very clear. Daylight savings time or bust. Okay, I'm going to be tying myself on airplane mode. Time starts now. So to begin, I will be summarizing our, mo our main points and then moving on to summarize the clearly flawed argumentation of side opposition points and then criticize the debate as to, why, to prove why team proposition has won this round. Beginning with our first substantive, we were arguing for consistent sleep schedules on behalf of the working class to keep their function and acuity consistent. Our biggest stressor in this debate is consistency. And team opposition literally argues that shifting sleep-wake cycles does not have a significant impact on cognitive function of work, both the working class as well as children, which is not at all true because we know that sleep equals consistent behaviors and habits. Moving on to our second substantive, economic decisions um, such as observed within the stock market, are inversely affected by the global economy functioning on um, that savings time. So by any day savings time and moving towards standard time on a global scale, um, the global economy would be placed in a more consistent place. So since the opposition would like to focus mainly on the stock market throughout their whole debate, let's talk about that and clarify some points. So the stock market is actually running, which the stock market does not actually run on debt savings time. It runs on universal, it runs on UTC. And therefore global communication is affected when some countries that are on daylight savings time try to communicate with those that are not. And what they don't understand is what the stock market is on a global scale. They only acknowledge that the stock market only makes the rich richer in America, but they fail to acknowledge the global impact of how communication effect is affected, communication of the stock market is affected. Their whole round, throughout this whole round, team opposition has failed to acknowledge the global loss of communication of DST. And considering that 80% of the world does not use DST, um, communication of the economy is already affected. Therefore, we are pushing to implement standard time year round for the economic benefit of the world. Our third substantive is that the inconsistent timing affects health. So team opposition actually rarely discusses some standard at all. And let me offer a point of clash. Team opposition attempts to argue that DST leads to less crashes, which is contradictory because growing your paper leads to more hospitalizations, which was stated in one of our previous substantives. So this completely eliminates that point. Judge, I believe um, another point of clash is that um, throughout this debate is that inconsistent sleep-wake cycles are not significant at all as what opposition was trying to support. But we would actually argue that although it is only one, sleep, one hour of sleep being lost or gained for one night, it takes weeks to adapt with a circadian rhythm. And 
Judge, we vote you. We urge you to vote for a world that seems to to seeks to maintain consistency for both health and economic prosperity on a global scale. We want long term stability, for, not a house that. We urge you to vote on consistency of sleep, consistency of habits, and economic prosperity throughout the world on a global scale. We want standard time to be implemented on a global scale to lead for greater prosperity. Thanks, Thank you, everyone. Yeah, I was just about to say, um, fantastic debate, everyone. Um, that was very well, very good job. I wish you all good luck in your future rounds. Um, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you so much for all of your Thank you, everyone. Thank you.